Nice. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we're doing a little bit of uh, fun chemistry here with cotton balls. Hey, you can probably guess where we're going. We got a couple concentrated acids here, nitric sulfuric. And we're gonna whip up a little batch of nitrocellulose, which is also known as gum cotton. Same stuff that's used for uh, the, the main base of smokeless powder, modern smokeless powder. This was actually, if I'm recalling correctly, the first man-made plastic. And again, another cool thing that was discovered by accident, there was a, a German chemist, I think his name was Frederick something. He was working in his kitchen with a mix of sulfuric and nitric acid, spilled a bunch of it on his kitchen table. I don't know why the hell he was doing chemistry in his kitchen, but you know, we've all been there. So, spilled these suckers, you know, mixed together on his table and grabbed the nearest wa washcloth he had to uh, wipe up the mess. And he wipes it up, throws it up on a uh, clothesline or whatever, leaves it dry out. And a few hours later, the damn thing just bursts into flames. So, he kind of realized he was onto something there, a, a method of nit nitrating cellulose. So, uh, that kind of became a standard. And then, I think around uh, 1862, celluloid was actually patented by Alexander something or other but pretty cool stuff what we're gonna make here is just basic nitrocellulose this is you know what uh, magicians use for for their stage magic flash cotton and flash paper now from from what we're gonna make we're gonna make nitrated cotton balls but from that you can actually run them in a blender uh, pour that mix over a screen and actually let that dry out and you're gonna get flash paper so it's pretty cool stuff but let's mix up our solutions. I'm going to throw some safety gear on because these are some nasty acids. Don't want to get them on the skin or, or you'll be hurting. All right, I'm all safety geared up like a goddamn model citizen. Look at that. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the sulfuric acid. Now I have a water bath here in case, or a nice bath rather, in case anything gets out of control. You can basically just dump the whole contents of your reaction right in there and neutralize it real quick. I also have a solution of sodium bicarbonate here, baking soda, and you know, if you were to get any on your skin or whatever, you can neutralize the acid solution with that. Also, once we're finished with the nitration of the cotton, we're gonna put it in there to neutralize all the acids so we get a, a nice stable compound. There's the meniscus. Just gonna do a reasonably small batch. No, no reason to go crazy with this stuff. Those are some tasty fumes. Now this is what you call a redneck fume. Look at that setup. <laughs> Love it. So I got a fan set up to help pull all the uh, fumes out of here. And we're just gonna add a few cotton balls to this mix. Hopefully you can kind of see. Grab a glass stir rod real quick. And you always want to make sure you get your balls fully saturated. That's pretty critical. Not just in chemistry, but in life. So the critical thing about the cotton is you want to make sure it's 100% cotton. You see this stuff. Hypoallergenic, 100% cotton. Made in USA, wherever the hell that is. We'll name a country anything nowadays. So one of the most dangerous things about this reaction is one, the chance of a runaway nitration, which can lead to a potential explosion or fire or that sort of thing. Uh, the other is the fumes actually given off by this, which there's obviously uh, nitric acid fumes, but from the decomposition of nitric acid, you can get nitrogen monoxide, which then reacts with oxygen in the air, and you get nitrogen dioxide, which is a, a really, really nasty compound that you do not want to get in your lungs. I apologize for the fan noise, but uh, I'm playing it safe here, not trying to prematurely die on my wife. So at this point, I'm just going to let the mix sit for maybe half an hour or so, let the nitronium ions displace the uh, OH groups on the cellulose and get some uh, cellulose nitrate. All right, it's been about half an hour. I'm going to take the flash cotton, immerse it into the sodium bicarbonate solution. Woohoo! Look at that. Let's get those acids neutralized. Oh, kadoki. That's how you do it. Uh, that's what the mat's for. 
plus uh, it's still an alkaline solution rather than the acidic solution, so that's good. So this solution is now going to be pretty rich in sodium sulfate and sodium nitrate since, you know, the, the carbonate groups are replaced by NO3 and SO4. Alright, so all the carbonates in the solution have already been fully neutralized, so we are going to have to add more sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the remaining acids. So at this point I'm going to squeeze these out. Most of the acids have been neutralized. We squeeze. I'm going to add it to the larger tank of ice water. Now this solution I'll probably uh, boil down and recover the nitrates from. So at this point any remaining acids are just acids that are trapped in the fibers of the cotton. Well, no longer cotton, but it once was. Alright. I think everything's neutralized. I'm going to add a little bit more baking soda and let this sit in here for uh, at least half an hour, maybe an hour, just to make sure the sodium bicarbonate is able to neutralize the entire structure of the cotton. Since it's just a so solution of sodium bicarbonate, it's, it's safe to handle without gloves now. At least in my opinion, I'm sure. I'm sure a lab instructor would not agree, but I am not a lab instructor. It burns! Just kidding. Now to stabilize it, back in the day they used to add camphor to it to make uh, celluloid film. This is actually, as I, I think I previously mentioned, this was the first polymer ever produced, to the best of my knowledge, or Wikipedia I guess. It was actually used pretty extensively for film, so they would make film rolls with it, x-ray sheets, photography, all that sort of stuff. And this was actually the cause of a lot of theater fires because it wasn't properly stabilized and there were probably some remaining nitrates in there. Also over time nitrocellulose will degrade uh, to a small extent and reproduce uh, acids. Those will further unstabilize it and it can eventually uh, spontaneously catch fire. Alright, so I decanted off the sodium bicarbonate water. It's been about an hour and just giving it a good rinse in some fresh distilled water just to pull any of that bicarbonate out. Wouldn't hurt to have a small percent of bicarbonate left in there. It's not really going to affect burn rate much, but it will keep any residual acids neutralized, so it's kind of beneficial. So I'm just going to reach in there, pull her out, and we're going to throw this in the desiccator for probably a day or so. The desiccator's pretty quick. It might be done in a few hours, actually. But I'll keep it in there for a day because this stuff does really take a while to dry out. So I got my desiccator going. I'll pop that up to 130 degrees just to make it dry out good and quick uh, pour a bunch of calcium chloride on the dish throw that in there and then I'll grab the nitrocellulose and toss that in alright well it's been about a day in the desiccator and here we are some fully dried nitrocellulose flash cotton ready to go Let's uh, move this big mass out of the way and see how she works, huh? Whoo! Spicy! That flashes up faster than a case of the herp. Definitely lost some, uh... <laughs> My knuckle hair is gone. Poor victim. Nice. That's some good stuff. See if she burns totally clean. Damn, that's that's pretty wild. Very fast burning. Some guys will actually nitrate this stuff twice just to ensure everything's fully nitrated, but honestly, I don't see the point here. It's that's as nitrated as you can get. Wonder what'll happen if we uh, throw a little bit in a container, you know, like contain it. Gonna make a little firecracker sort of deal. <laughs> I'm gonna roll up a little aluminum foil tube, twist off the ends and see if we can add some nitrocellulose to it. Alright, let's see if we can get this stuff to make a little bang, huh? So, it's actually nitrocellulose, uh, I may have mentioned, but it's the primary component in smokeless powder with uh, some stabilizers being added and usually a little bit of nitroglycerin 
that's a double bitch powder, but could actually grab a can and see exactly what's in the stuff. So here's my can of Unique. Uh, I use this for reloading, and let's see if it says what the hell's in this stuff. Uh, I don't think it's saying. Yeah, but the big thing with uh, these nitrocellulose-based propellants is they need to be pressurized in order to work effectively. The more pressure they build, the, the better they burn. So it's a bit interesting. And uh, I'm by no means an expert on this stuff. I kind of just got into reloading about a year ago. Haven't done a whole lot with it, mostly 9mm, but it, it is a bit of fun. All right, let's stuff a little nitrocellulose in there. A little screwdriver will do just fine. Hopefully that will be able to contain it. I'm just going to have it held with some vice grips, move this the hell away. All right. <laughs> Let's see what the hell this does. I'm gonna throw some pucker goggles on. Otherwise I might be losing an eye. And we'll start with a lighter. Whoa! Holy fuck a moly! Jesus! <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Scared the shit out of me, but that was really cool. Oh my god. Can't hear for shit. <laughs> it uh, it shot some unburnt nitrocellulose onto the side of my home-built PID-controlled hot plate there. So I guess it wasn't fully pressurized enough to totally complete combustion, but <laughs> that's that was pretty cool. Try that again. So hopefully on this one I have the end capped, kind of smushed off in a way there that'll better confine it. Let's add some nitro to there. It smells like a shooting range in here. That might be a bit more than the last time. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. This one's also a little smaller so it should build pressure faster. At least that's my hope. All right, moment of truth. Will I lose hearing? Wow! Yep. Yep. I lost hearing. What the hell does Archer say? Womp. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that worked. And I think we got complete combustion. I don't see or complete deflagration or detonation, I'm not sure which it would be, but uh, my ears are ringing like a fucking orchestra. Jeez. That's pretty cool though. <laughs> wow. Powerful stuff. Very powerful stuff. It's, it's uh, definitely something to respect and not scale up too much because if stuff goes wrong with something like that, it, it can go high order. And it can really cause a lot of damage, so, you know, keep your wits about you. <laughs> Alright guys, well thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If uh, you like what you see on the channel, please don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. And if you've been following for a while and you like what we're doing here, uh, please consider donating on Patreon to help support the channel. Uh, these chemicals all, <laughs> all come at a pretty hefty price tag, so uh, any support is, is truly appreciated. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. A new shop manager here. He might look cool, but don't let him fool you. He can be a dick. <laughs> What's up, Brody? What you doing, bud? I'm sure he'll tell me to get on the lathe soon enough. <laughs>